So today I'm going to talk to you about something a little bit different. Um, but before I do, I'm going to premise why I'm going to talk about it. So we know that the world is a complex place. We face new and different challenges on a daily basis and it becomes harder and harder to keep up. This applies to our personal lives and in our working lives as well. But then how do we adapt? One of the reasons that, well, one of the things I believe we need to do is fundamentally shift the way we think and solve problems. And I believe one of the ways that we can do this is by using the skills that we learn when we play video games. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you in the audience are sitting there with this expression feeling a bit skeptical, but just bear with me and hopefully by the end of this talk I'll have changed some of your perceptions around video games. So essentially today I'm going to share with you four important skills that I believe video games can teach us. So the first skill is extreme optimism. Gamers have learned to be incredibly optimistic in their ability, which means that they will tackle any problem they have with the reasonable belief that they can succeed, no matter how difficult something can become. But why is this the case? Basically, it's all about the dopamine. Studies have shown that when we play games, we get a rush of dopamine, or the feel-good hormone, in our body. And this ties in strongly to our sense of motivation and prioritizing what's important to us. So this can typically, ha typically happen when we clear a level, or beat an opponent, or complete an objective. We get this powerful feeling of reward and confidence in our own abilities, and that motivates us to keep going and to keep playing. So we get this strong sense of self-confidence in what we can do and what we can achieve. But why this matters to us here in the real world, it's because when we are optimistic and highly motivated to achieve something, no amount of failure can stop us. Which ties quite well into my second skill that games can teach us, persistence. Studies show that gamers spend up to 80% of their time failing. Now, just think about that for a moment. Can you imagine having the motivation and the drive to carry on working at something that you have spent 80% of your time failing at. Most people would give up, but not gamers. Now, typical games that would inspire the strong sense of persistence would be games like Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Now, these games were notoriously difficult, but they were highly successful because something kept on bringing the players back. No matter how many times they died, no matter how many times they failed, something kept on bringing them back and back and playing and trying again and again, and eventually, when they cleared that one hard level or beat that difficult boss fight, they have this powerful sense of accomplishment. Wow, I have done something incredibly difficult. And in gaming circles, if you can say, I've completed a Souls game, it's instant respect. They've essentially learned that persistence pays off no matter how long it takes. Because they essentially apply what I like to call the flat method to problem solving. Where you fail, you accept that you have failed. You learn from your mistakes and what you can do differently next time. You then adapt your behavior based on what you've learned, and you just try again. And how we can apply this in the real world is that if we persist in any challenge, no matter how many times we fail, we can achieve our goals. So the third skill that games can teach us, social collaboration. Now, contrary to popular belief, gamers, or games themselves, are actually highly social. They provide us the opportunities to come together and work towards a common goal. And these are your typical online multiplayer games. For example, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has taken off this year with an average concurrent player base of two and a half million people worldwide. But then to just bring it home to some more classic examples would be your typical World of Warcraft games or Counter-Strike. So what happens when we actually play these online multiplayer games with one another? We learn trust. Studies have shown that, get, that you are actually more likely to trust a person after you have played a game with them, because it actually takes a great deal of trust to play a game with someone. You trust that they will spend their time with you. You trust that they will play by the same rules as you. You trust that they will work towards the same goal as you. You learn how to cooperate with one another. You identify a shared interest in the game, and you work together to achieve it. And you effective, effectively collaborate by identifying what each player brings to the table in terms of their unique skill set, and you work in the most effective way possible to reach that objective. And this is arguably most of what we have to do today in the working world. We have to come together, we have to work in groups, we have to collaborate our skills, and we have to work together towards a common goal. 
So what this basically can teach us is that we can develop social connections, we can learn to understand one another, and we can actually learn how to properly and effectively work together to achieve a common goal. So this brings me to the fourth skill that games can teach us, which in my opinion is actually the most important one. And I'm glad to see that throughout today, a lot of what people have touched on in their speeches all comes together in some way or another into this presentation. And that's creative problem solving. Now, in my opinion, video games are actually the biggest form of artistic expression we have today. We have these grand, epic virtual worlds with beautifully composed music, with intricate storytelling, all coming together in one single platform for us to play in. But what makes this so special? is that every experience is unique. Each player has a different experience of a game because the outcome depends entirely on the choices that you make in the game. So here are just a few examples of choice-based games that have over a dozen different outcomes based entirely on the choices you make. So you essentially learn that certain choices and actions have consequences. You learn to anticipate this, and you learn to work according to that based on the outcome that you want to achieve. Secondly, we learn different ways to solve a problem or meet an objective. We learn that there is no single correct way to solve a problem. Every mission or goal in a game can be completed in many different ways. It's entirely up to the player. One of my personal favorite examples is a game like Metal Gear Solid. This is a game with over 200 missions to play in. And although each objective for each mission stays the same, there are over a dozen different ways that you can go about playing it. You have, to, you have to think strategically, and you have to plan in advance as to how you're going to complete the objective. You have to consider all possibilities and variables and arrive at the most effective solution. So this essentially shows us that there is no one-size-fits-all way of thinking, which is a far cry from how we are taught in schools today. We are constantly taught from a young age that there is only one right answer and thus only one right way of thinking. And anything outside of this narrow scope of, my, of mindset is actually quickly punished or stamped out. This mindset that is drilled into us from such a young age is outdated, archaic, and will not prepare us for the real world. And it's because games are an interactive and non-linear form of entertainment, unlike reading a book or watching a movie where you sit there, you passively consume a story, you have no participation in the outcome of that story, games actually involve you throughout the entire process. How that game ends is entirely based on what you do. And what this can show us in the real world, and what I believe to be true, is that an interactive and non-linear approach to our thinking is vital to solving the complex problems we face today, whether it's climate change, conscious consumerism, anything, how capitalism defines the modern world. We need to take a more all-inclusive approach. We cannot simply think that because we've read two textbooks, we now know how to solve a problem. So just to wrap up, I believe we should all actually spend a little bit more time playing video games. Not just because they're incredibly fun, but because they can teach us an entirely different way of thinking. And they can teach us how to apply certain skills that can benefit us every day in our personal or in our working lives. So we should all treat life like a game and play to win. Thank you.